that the rule doesn't get that work actually be proven in an IF characteristic at scale. It depends on, on the characteristics of your workload, but, but you know, I've got to talk about kind of the dimensions of that. Um, so certainly, you know, there's unstructured versus structured. So, you know, the column is, 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 is a declared schema, for example, in the DB. And you can't add to it in an online operation. It doesn't have to be offline operation. It doesn't require a rebuild, but it's still a structure that's been applied. Um, certainly, you have to get large queries. Uh, certainly, if you're doing large transforms, you know, there's, there's other technologies that are going to do that uh, far more robustly than ours. Um, and certainly the idea of, of, of predefined queries, you can solve that with many different technologies. One of the things that's, that's differential about us is you don't have to predefine anything. So you can just load the data out of it and you can use it and, um, and go. So that, this is kind of just a, a ballpark here I'm going to use it and what makes sense for um, you. Know, a few benchmarks we'll talk through. This is actually a historical one against traditional database ones. And it's got some metrics that are worthwhile. This was a uh, uh, done by Kona, very smoke, other open source common databases. Um, so we're the red bar there at the bottom. Um, but the Star Trek benchmark has got a couple things in place. So one more faster, but that's, that, that's one of the things we read out of this. But the Star Trek benchmark actually has, uh, it's instrumented in a couple different ways. So it's got uh, two table, three table, four, and five table join operations going from left to right. And so one of the characters characteristics of our system, you get a pretty predictable response time. Right, so you don't have us jumping up and down, you get very flat, predictable. Uh, it's difficult to write bad query with our engine. Um, and then the other thing, it's actually a little hard to read, but there's actually a, a sense of scale associated with this, and it shows up best on, on the ones off of probably query three. They actually have rows that pull in um, something like 100 million and something like a million and something like 10,000 records. And so there's sort of a, a slope associated with it here that shows up in the other engines, but we have a pretty flat response time for, for our engine. So that's one of the, the uh, things you see. So we, we've, we've basically solved the I.O. to a degree that, that there's not much difference in I.O. for us in the engines. Um, so that, that's the expectation you would, you would have. Uh, this is just an internal benchmark we've done against loading uh, the thousand genomes data set. Uh, this is a low rate with one, four, and 16 performance modules. Um, uh, the low rate easily hit the range of rows per second, but it's rows per hour. Uh, some queries run against this analytic, this um, thousand genomes data set. But we're looking for the linear scale off the right here as we go from four to eight to 16 performance modules. Um, the underlying metrics are that we were getting a, a millions of rows per second per core processed through these queries. Uh, so it's a scalable analytics engine. Um, and it's really, I don't know if we highlighted it, but the, the, the parallelism is actually kind of built in. We actually distribute the data across all available cores automatically. Because there's thousands of jobs created, or 10,000 jobs, it actually gets a nice distribution of work for that. And so that's not something you have to kind of pay attention to when you're, when you're running so that the, um, you know, as, you, as you run the queries, you don't have to understand the word about the parallels and it's just taken care of for you. Uh, this is a benchmark we did internally um, with uh, Impala. We also, we also uh, included Hive on there, but, but the, the numbers versus Hive are, uh, really don't show up on the same scale. I mean, we're, in, in many cases, we're a thousand times faster than so that's, that's um, I, did, I didn't include that that character. But versus, versus Impala, we actually performed very well. Um, this, we used a, a open source uh, web analyst tool called, called Hewitt. We used their data, their queries, their data. Um, we've been using that internally for, for benchmarking because that, that open source data model actually maps to how many people in our ad serving space are using our technology. So it's interesting to us to use that to talk about how people are using our technology and talk about this in a much more open way than, than our customer data model, obviously. Um, but we had uh, the query set up here. We ran this on the Amazon 5 node cluster. Um, and you know, so we're, 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 in some cases, 4x, in some cases, 10x, and in some cases, uh, up to 100x faster than, than, than all of them. 
and again, the benchmark versus versus high is like a thousand times faster in, in a large number of cases. Um, and and to uh, kind of recap here, this is definitely a use case where um, you know their use cases follow sort of what, what we recommend as our core best use case. So sort of certainly they have a predefined schema, um, structured uh, structured data. A uh, large data set being pulled into this is this is a uh, uh, hundreds of millions of uh, records being pulled into these data queries, um, and so they have a, a, a need and interest in the ad hoc uh, performance characteristics. Uh, this is all they are highly interested in dimensional analysis. Uh, it's you know really as you serve, what time you serve, what color is it, as you serve for uh, that same person when was served. So there's a lot of a lot of dimensions associated with the impressions being served. Um, this is uh, where to download, where to try. We're definitely encouraging people to take a look and I'm happy to get your feedback. Any questions? Uh, we do have some synchronization that we do on rights uh, to coordinate and synchronize the rights. 
we have some shared metadata that's available for accelerating queries. Any other questions? Ask me, and allow me to ask me a stupid question because I'm not a database guy. Um, when you we were trying to, when you had a slide up that said, when to use Infinity, Infinity DB for who? Right. You showed uh, different query sizes from one to uh, 100 per billion, I suppose. Right. And then you said that there were small query sizes and more nested and complicated query sizes. Well, I sort of want to, you know, um, so, so my question is, you sort of did not say which way. Usually with non-SQL non type guys, they say they just skip. You know, like number of queries they can handle is the way to answer the question. In your case, you sort of put your stake in both ends. Well, so I don't have the right graphic to support this one set of sort of I think the challenge is scale today are Dimensions. So we just want to have to maximize the largest number of concurrent fixed size operations, right? So I need to have a, a scalable form that will, will take care of all the traffic you got in these things you can take care of. And as this has to interact with a, a, a data technology of some kind, and the most critical component is doing the scale of, of concurrent operations. So, but the other part is when you've got 10 analysts or 20 analysts or 30 analysts, Sitting, sitting, you know, in a building, and they need to deal with um, queries at scale. So they've got to run queries that cover, you know, billions of rows. And next month it's going to be tens of billions, and the month after that might be more. Right. So, so we're better suited to that second workload. Right. So how do you then handle the idea that you've got uh, larger, larger uh, data lines underneath the, the your, your analyst requirements? Did that help answer your question? Any other questions? So, no, I was scalability, the ICT amount. Uh, according to my understanding, the definition of scalability is uh, when you allocate uh, a cluster, if your current cluster size cannot handle the capacity of your database system, so you have to scale up, scale up. Yes. So in that case, how do you do that? Automatically, manual or semi-automatic? So the answer is a little bit simple to tell. So, so when you're running a new infrastructure and you've got an underlying new data file system that scales, and we don't manage that at all. So we're a layer that fits in um, above that. Uh, you know, we can actually address a very large number of nodes. Uh, we're happy to have somebody else test out scalability of thousands of nodes that we're not there yet. Um, how, how do you do that? You mentioned that you can. How do you yes. do that? How do we do that? Well, so we, we basically, so when you, when you install, you install us on, on a new node, we've got a process running in there. Um, it's, it's in a different process space than the, 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 the do. Um, when we distribute the, the, the queries, uh, it's, we just distribute it across all the available servers. For example, my current account site is a a dozen nodes. Yes. And because of the capacity is limited. So uh, the query data distribution cannot handle that. So I, in that case, I can the whole side of my nodes, which is two dozen. Or you know, from one unit to one, or from one unit to two dozen. In that understanding scenario, how do you make it state scalable or metric so that your my application won't have any sort of problem because of database volume? So our our existing one of our existing customers. Sorry, thank you. Uh, so one of our existing customers went through a similar size transformation. So they all had eight services in production, um, and they went from eight to twenty-four services to, to address the data scale. Um, so there's some internal concepts underneath that actually get uh, uh, viewers and mount points associated with that. We actually just remap mount points onto the new servers uh, to allow for um, to allow for access to those. Alright, I have a last question. Alright, it's pretty good. Uh, it's the last uh, part of the show now, so it's not to the end. But thank you all for coming. I hope you all enjoyed the show. We'll give you a feedback on the uh, on the uh,
look forward to seeing what you're going to do. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. 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 